he's very much a kind of postmodern magician, that guy. The guy that is creating these stories and creating these complex frameworks that are uh, actually designed to destabilize the public in a way. At the Infinite Man Summit 2017 in Sofia, Bulgaria, this is Josh Friedman speaking with Shea Matthews, the inner game coach of the natural lifestyles. Hey, again. Yeah. How you doing, Shay? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm really happy with the speech today and the energy of the summit. It's good. Can you tell us just briefly a little bit of a key message from your speech? The key message from my speech today was really about accessing unlimited potential and also about like understanding the difference between your, I guess we could call your egoic identity, that's often an identity of self-protection and comfort versus choosing to be a creator, choosing to be somebody that moves towards what they love, even if it's a little bit scary. You discussed a little bit about postmodernism mm -hmm. in the speech. Could, can you talk about that briefly? Yeah, postmodernism is a, is a big subject. Uh, I, I guess in many ways I kind of poo-pooed it a little bit in the in the, the the talk. In the talk, the specific thing that I said was that uh, we live in somewhat of a dangerous time in terms of some uh, I guess you call them consensus worldviews that are going on at the moment because we have a predominantly materialistic worldview that rides on the back of narcissism, postmodernism, and uh, nihilism. Really, uh, now I'm not saying they're the only constructs that exist, of course, I mean, but there, there tends to be a lot of that kind of attitude that, that is around, I think. Um, so in terms of how postmodernism fits into that, uh, I think postmodernism is a brilliant reaction to a philosophy in the past where we needed to kind of deconstruct things and move beyond meaning in a way, to move to a kind of a meta-meaning, a place of really having choice and, and also giving ourselves power as individuals as opposed to you know, the kind of previous constructs of philosophy. So in that sense, I really appreciate the power of postmodernism to give people direction. Uh, of of uh, of pulling things apart, like to, to give them permission, where you know, and, and in many ways, I studied a lot of postmodernism over the years as part of my esoteric sort of learnings, like things like Nietzsche and also um, understanding uh, chaos magic was one of the studies that I got into, which is a very much postmodern approach to spirituality, uh, very much kind of nothing is true and everything is possible kind of thing, uh, which opens the doorway to a lot of questions. But the downside of postmodernism is that it's a little bit too loose. It can lead to too much undoing, too much meaninglessness, if that makes sense. So part of what I was kind of saying in the speech as well is that it's important to have meaning as well as, you know, being able to deconstruct things. And that's on a micro level. So you're saying that postmodernism can harm an individual and his psyche, yeah? If, if overindulged, yeah. Yeah, because it's like any any philosophy to an excess is going to lead to some kind of imbalance, in my opinion. Uh, so the, the the idea of deconstructionism, you know, postmodern deconstructionism, uh, is very very beautiful in terms of being able to to focus it on structures of authority, you know, structures of, of whatever really to see through those structures and to find what's the underlying nature. Uh, and if we keep deconstructing, then really what we find if we keep destructing is, is deconstructing is there's just more and more deconstruction it's kind of limitless in a way uh, which I appreciate but at the same time like I said it's like where does it end and to what end as well uh, so in that sense if, if and I can relate I speak from my own experience of doing a lot of postmodern deconstructionism on myself and coming to a point where I realized that really it only just left me in a kind of an existential emptiness uh, which wasn't that effective in terms of giving myself meaning and purpose in the long run so I've counterbalanced that with looking for frameworks of metaphysical meaning and empowerment that are more aligned to what helps me be effective in the world as well. Now it's not saying that I give up postmodernism because I think it's a great tool and I can use that whenever I want. The thing that I like to do is have many tools in my toolbox and use what's appropriate as I move. So sometimes postmodernism is appropriate, sometimes other philosophies are appropriate. I'm a journalist and I cover geopolitics mm. and I picked up on a little something in your speech or maybe you left it out. Could you tell me if there's any takeaway from postmodernism, how it relates to global politics? Well, that's a big question too. And honestly, I mean, I'm not really like a, a big geopolitical commentator. I mean, I like to keep an eye on politics to some degree. Uh, and I think that, I mean, like we, we live in very interesting times. We live in times where there is a lot of 
a lot of complexity going on on a lot of different levels. So it's, it's almost very hard to have any real clear opinion about anything in particular because it's just so many moving pieces that are happening on so many different levels. Uh, and, and what I sort of see more than anything on the geopolitical spectrum is that there is a lot of instability and nobody's really able to do anything very uh, freely without a lot of consequence potentially blowing up in different forms. You know, I think postmodernism has an aspect to play in this sort of current political context because especially from the Western perspective. I mean, for example, you look at some, uh, like obviously Islamic countries, for example, they're not so postmodern. I mean, postmodernism is very much a product of the modern world. Uh, and, and I think in some ways it's kind of a reaction to an excess of materialism. It's a reaction to an excess of, of, of too much systemization, too much industrialization. Um, so postmodernism plays a role in giving the mind and the and the, the political context more freedom to kind of move and to to have different expressions. Uh, the thing that I was also sort of saying in the speech, I guess, is that there is a level of uh, I guess you could call it postmodernism that's taking place, which is that in uh, you know in, especially in the U.S. and in, in Russia, for example, at the moment, there's a lot of attempts to destabilize the public using what they call nonlinear warfare. Uh, nonlinear warfare just means like really a lot of different opinions getting thrown around and a lot of like it's 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 very hard to have a position when you're in that kind of context because there's so many positions and no matter what position you take it's always kind of equally opposed by so many other positions um, so in that sense I think postmodernism's kind of had an effect on the world in terms of allowing a lot of that to happen and I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing I think it is uh, it's just a thing that's happening and maybe that's going to set the groundwork for some new thing to emerge I really don't know uh, but it is definitely a very interesting time and, and once again, like I'm not here to say for or against postmodernism, I think that it, it definitely has an influence in terms of how we are shaping our place in the world politically as well. And I think just to add to that, like particularly like from what I understand anyway, and once again I'm not an expert, um, but you look at like Putin, Putin has been very influenced by one of the characters that's his right hand man who is actually a, a, a theatre producer. So he's kind of like, it's his job to actually create stories, to create the stories and the themes and the propaganda, I guess. He's a propaganda sort of specialist. Uh, and in, in some sense, the feeling that I get is he's very much a kind of postmodern magician, that guy. The guy that is creating these stories and creating these complex frameworks that uh, are actually designed to destabilize the public in a way. You spoke a little bit in the speech about how an individual can be aware of that and tap into some mm. warrior sense possibly mm. to combat that. Mm. Could, could you explain what you were discussing? Yeah, sure. I wouldn't even say I wouldn't even say it's a it's a warrior thing so much. It's but it definitely being uh, in contact with your truth. It's it's once again a little bit of a, an interesting thing to talk about. What I'm what I'm trying to get to is is that inside of inside of us is uh, a sense of what feels right and what's kind of true in a way and I'm not saying that's a universal thing necessarily but some things that are universal like for example right now I'm sitting on a rock and there's like you know there's trees and there's plants and there's nature around us and this is actually the context from which we were born you know hundreds of thousands of years or million, hundreds of millions of years of evolution created humans out of this context of physical nature and you know eating and, and, uh, and drinking and doing the things that we do in this kind of environment uh, and that in some sense has intrinsic meaning attached to it like it's kind of like there's a natural meaning to to reality that exists and I think part of the side effect of being so modern and so detached and so capable of having so much comfort and separation from any nature is given us this kind of fantasy that somehow we can just make it up as we go along that we're somehow not accountable to nature or where we have power over nature and then therefore we get to recreate the meanings of what nature is and how we affect it which I think nature's very lovingly creating a buffer for us to get away with that for a period of time, uh, but I don't know how long that's going to last as well. You know, I mean, I think we're really paying quite a big price globally for this kind of, in some sense, what I would say is a very arrogant and selfish kind of attitude of, uh, you know, materialistic narcissism. It's like, fuck it, we can just do whatever we want, especially multinational corporations. I mean, they seem to have this inbuilt kind of agenda that just comes with the fact that they're multinational corporations oftentimes that they deserve to have power that's unaccountable to anybody else and they can write the rules and they can they can basically rewrite the laws and nobody really has any power to do that do anything against them uh, and man there is definitely a lot of trends happening that I've seen in the last few years and yet again I'm not an expert but I see a lot of trends happening where 
multinational corporations are kind of some of them anyway, especially the ones involved in the military industrial complex, etc., are, are, are fortifying themselves against the ability for anybody to really have an opinion against them. And it's almost like it's illegal to even have an opinion against a company these days. Uh, so in that sense, I think that's a kind of pretty dangerous kind of role to take or a line to take because where is the ability to to have balance in that system? Where is the ability for people to stand up or for governments to stand up and say, like, enough's enough? I mean, you no, you can't fucking keep pulling oil out of, the, out of the earth. No, you can't have gas wells here. No, you can't, like, you know, poison masses of people and not be accountable for it. Yeah. Is there any core philosophy that you could pitch to other people or something that you advocate? Well, honestly, I mean, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a paradigm pirate. So in that sense, I use a lot of different kinds of paradigms and ideas that move me in different ways at different times, depending on what I'm needing to learn and focus on. Um, honestly, I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess, what would I call myself? I think that the, the, these days I'm, I'm very much operating from a place of kind of coming back to Buddhism in a way. And I'm not saying Buddhist, Buddhism as a kind of a, 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 a religion, but coming from the idea that like there is an underlying truth to reality and, and then I'm seeking that truth. I'm seeking to, to get into that truth of reality. And there are certain real things that you can do like mindfulness, awareness, like getting into your body, trusting the practices of who you are that can really make that real. Like it can, it can start to have a very powerful effect on, on the psyche, on the human when they allow themselves to have that kind of experience. How can people get in touch with you and learn more about you? Good question. Uh, if you want to, yeah, if you want to get in touch with me, you can email me at shay s h a e at the natural lifestyles one word dot com. Uh, you can also just put in my name, Shay Matthews, into Google. You'll find me. Uh, also, I have a website at the moment which is called innergamelifecoaching.com. So you can sign up there, get onto my mailing list, and uh, you can follow me. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank you.